I technically should not make a video for this problem, <laughs> problem three, but I will. I'll be kind. Um, if I were your teacher, I'd just require that you remember that the derivative of uh, secant x, um, that is ddx secant x, is equal to seek x, ooh, sorry, seek x 10x. Because if you'd known that, then this question is done. Because the antiderivative of secant x 10x should just be, then be secant x plus c. So a, done. But let's say that you're a very good student and you just absolutely hate memorizing stuff. Fine. Um, so here is this outlet, which is, if you didn't memorize, you could do this. Which is, you could view this integral as, since secant is 1 over cosine x, hopefully you remembered that, you could write 1 over cosine x in place of secant. And then, hopefully you also remember that tangent is sine x over cosine x. These are definitions that you have to memorize at some point, so you should know these. Um, okay, great. And so then you'd immediately see that this integral is the integral of sine x over cosine squared x. And you should immediately see this as easily lending itself to be, uh, to be solved using u substitution. And so here, um, since we see a function in the bottom, which is our, often our candidate for our u, and we see a function in a composition, which is x squared composed of cosine x, we see that cos x is a good candidate for u. So then du will have to be negative sine x dx, and so then du over negative sine x will be dx, solving for dx, because we know we need to substitute for dx, not just for cosine x with our u. So um, we need to substitute for dx and, you know, with something that involves a u, right? So making those substitutions that, from what we've just created just now, uh, we have sine x, which we, do, which we don't have a replacement for, which is fine. And then cosine squared x becomes u squared because we've called cosine x u, okay? And then dx, we, which we just solved for, is right there which is du over sine x, well actually du over negative sine x, okay. And you'd know if you've watched my u substitution videos that this is always convenient. Um, so we could take out a negative and then we have one over u squared du. And of course the integral here is going to say negative the antiderivative of u to the negative two du. Remember u to the negative two would have integral add one to the power, so plus one, and divide by that new power, which would be negative one. So this would be negative u to the negative one, which is negative one over u. Okay, great. So then what you'd have here is negative, and then the integral of this would be negative one over u. And because this is an indefinite integral, you'd have to write a plus c because it doesn't have, um, you know, limits of integration. And so the minus minus cancels, and c is allowed to be negative from the start, so one over u plus c. Okay, but u is equal to um, cosine, so this is saying one over cosine x plus c which is clearly secant x plus c. So I would say don't do this, don't put yourself through this much um, work. Just remember the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x, and then you'll know the antiderivative, right? Of secant x tan x, that is. Okay, cool. The antiderivative of secant x is actually like some a clever matter, and you should not know that if you're an AB calculus. You'll learn the antiderivative of, of secant um, x um, in, um, BC, and if you're dying in curiosity, it's a natural log of secant x plus tan x. Seems like that partnership between secant x and tan x doesn't go away, but that's a different lesson. I, I have videos, two ways to show that actually, so if you're curious, you can check out those videos. Take care.